All right, everybody, here we go for our next video. This video is on photon momentum and de Broglie wavelength. All right, this is, by the way, these are like kind of our second to last topic is what's included in this, this couple of videos here on de Broglie wavelengths. Um, so we're getting real close to the end of the AP Physics 2 curriculum here, which is exciting. All right, we're going to start off with this, this first topic here on photon momentum. Here is kind of a cool thing about photons and about light that you don't really have to know, but it's awesome. Um, something that th there's really long and a really complex derivation for this equation that you don't have to know, but it's really cool to look at. Basically, the equation for the energy of any particle, the energy of any particle, and we'll do this as squared, is equal to its rest energy or rest mass energy, so mc squared. Um, so it's rest energy squared plus, and then we use this thing called pc squared, where p is the momentum of that particle. Basically what this says is that uh, energy is a result of the existence of an object, right? the fact that that object exists in space, and the movement of that object. So here's where we kind of see right? energy is what we've looked at before, of energy is things moving, but also energy is just the fact that it exists in space, <clears throat> which is our new kind of topic on this mass energy equivalence that we've looked at here. So this is kind of cool, um, but what is a consequence of that for light? Let's, let's say we have the energy for light. Actually, I'm, I'm going to use photon, energy of a photon here. So if I have the energy of a photon, I get that squared, right? What's, what's the mass of a photon, though? Well, photons are, are massless, so that means this whole term kind of goes away because mass is zero for a photon. All right, if we have any other particle, whether that's like a proton or an electron, a muon, or a, a baseball, I don't know, uh, those have mass. But if we take a photon, photons do not have mass. Photons are light. So what we get is now we have this PC squared version of this. All right, both sides are squared, so we'll just square root both sides. There we go. So we get that the energy of a photon is equal to its momentum times the speed of light, C. This is actually something that's really cool, um, just to say that the energy of a photon is its momentum of that photon times the speed of light. This is awesome because it leads us to this, th this conclusion that light has momentum. Light actually has momentum, and that's something we could actually calculate. Uh, now, if we look at our AP equation sheet, right, this whole modern physics stuff is on page 3, we don't see this E equals PC anywhere. Um, so we don't have to use that. You don't have to know. Uh, you don't have to know this equation, but it's really cool to look at and to say, okay, energy is at the momentum of a photon times the speed of light. So photons have momentum. Something that we could look at, though, is just say, what is the momentum of a 620 nanometer photon? Um, uh, so I'm going to do a practice question. Question number one, why not? What is the momentum, so P equals question mark, for a 620 nanometer photon? Hope oh, that was spelled wrong. Photon. Okay, well, if we have E equals PC, we'll write energy for light. Energy for light, right? We also know, and this is something we are given on the equation sheet, E equals HF. Energy is H times F. So E equals HF. But then what we just went through equals PC. Well, remember, frequency is also... Um, Right, we, we know this relationship lambda equals velocity over frequency, and that's from way up here on waves and optics. Lambda is velocity over frequency. But what velocity does the speed of, or it does light move? C. Okay, so if we plug this in over for this frequency over here, we can get that energy is HC over lambda, which I'm, I'm hoping is something that you have seen before. 
is equal to P over C. Okay, so I've got speed of light cancels out. That's on both sides. We can get the momentum of this photon is equal to H or Planck's constant divided by lambda, 620 nanometers. Actually, I'll, I'll write this in, in variables first. So H over lambda. Okay, so if we would take H, let, let's find H, let's find Planck's constant from your AP equation sheet. H, Planck's constant. Well, we're given, we're given lambda in terms of nanometers, so we'll have to put lambda in terms of meters, so we can use this, uh, this joules second. It's not letting me highlight it here. But 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. There we go. Joules times seconds. So we get 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And then our wavelength is 620 nanometers, and nano means times 10 to the minus 9. Okay, so if we want this momentum of this photon, here we go. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 divided by 620 e negative 9. I get 1.07 times 10 to the minus 27, and this is momentum, so kilogram meter per second. Okay. So there's our momentum of our photon. Wow, you just calculated the momentum of light. All right, momentum before, we just knew momentum as mv. But now we can look at momentum as something that's entirely separate. Momentum is a property of something that is just existing and traveling. Doesn't matter what its mass is, even if the mass is zero, which is kind of cool. Okay. So that's for photon momentum. You Remember, you do not have to know this. I'll, I'll put a highlighted X through here. You do not have to know this. It's just cool to see that we could calculate it if we want to. And there is actually a way that we can calculate this momentum based on this relationship right here for a photon using our next topic called the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, so let's take a look at that now. We're going to take a look at this thing called de Broglie wavelength. De Broglie wavelength. All right, the de Broglie wavelength, there was this, th this, this French physicist, uh, there's a lot of those, but Louis de Broglie or Louis de Broglie, um, he decided that if light, which is a wave, can have momentum, right? If light, which is a wave, can have momentum, just like all the things that have mass, like particles, Louis de Broglie said, then why can't? Particles have a wave, like light. So what de Broglie did is he set this energy equation that we just looked at, right? Energy is P times C. And now instead of saying energy of a light, he said that this was the energy of a particle is now equal to the momentum of a particle. And then the speed of light is a universal constant. That doesn't change. Well, the energy of a particle, if we're putting this in terms of a wave, right, this is the same thing as before. Hc over lambda is the momentum of the particle times speed of light. There's still speed of light on both sides. Oh, this looks familiar. We just did this. So we get P is equal to H over lambda. But if we're looking for this, this quantity we're calling the de Broglie wavelength, what we'll do is we will solve for lambda because our wavelength is what we're interested in so we'll we'll get this and i like to do subscripts db for de broglie wavelength is equal to right if we just rearrange this equation planck's constant over the momentum okay because for particles right or things moving we know what momentum is, right? P equals mv. If we know its mass and we know its velocity, we can find its momentum. Photons are just different because they don't have mass. But de Broglie said, even if something has mass, it's a wave. Okay.
so this is kind of kind of an interesting uh, an interesting thing. Um, let's take a look at ca calculating a couple of these. So um, let's use the brown pen. Why not? So this de Broglie wavelength. Let's practice this a little bit. What is? I'll do question one. What is the de Broglie wavelength? De Broglie wavelength of pen's a little bit too thick. De Broglie wavelength of a baseball of a baseball, which baseballs are about 0.15 kilograms at 100 miles per hour. And 100 miles per hour, right? That's a fast pro pitch, but it, it happens consistently. Um, and 100 miles per hour is equal to 44 meters per second. Okay, well, de Broglie wavelength, right? Lambda de, of de Broglie is H over momentum, which if it's a particle that we know it has mass and we know what its velocity is, right? Momentum is equal to MV. Okay, so H, and this is from the equation sheet, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 31, 34, times 10 to the minus 34 over... And then it's mass, 0.15 kilograms. It's velocity. Goodness sake, sorry, my pen is given out on me. Velocity is 44 meters per second. So we'll get that our de Broglie wavelength for this baseball, if we plug this all in, 6.63 e minus 34, divided by 0.15, divided by 44, I get 1.00. Um, times 10 to the negative 34, and this is de Broglie wavelength, so that's going to be in terms of meters, right? Because light wavelengths are a distance. Okay, 1 times 10 to the minus 34 meters. Well, that is a number that's honestly, that's just so small, we can't even observe that. That is, that's about a thousandth the size of an atom. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was reading the wrong scale. That is uh, about 20 times, like 10 to the 20th times smaller than an atom. 10 to the 20th times smaller. So that's something that we will never, well, I won't say we'll never, but we are not possibly able to observe because that's just so small. So the bigger the object is, the smaller the wavelength is. So anything that's on the order of a baseball being thrown, we can't possibly observe this wavelength. It's just way too short for it oscillating up and down. But what if we took something that is so small that it's almost massless? It's not quite, but it's almost massless. That'll take us, let's do question two. What is the de Broglie wavelength? I'm going to say, what's the de Broglie wavelength for an electron at, oh, let's say 5 times 10 to the 5th meters per second, right? Electrons are so tiny. Um, if you want to take a look at, um, actually, we'll do that in a moment. Don't worry. But then this 5 times 10 to the 5th meters per second, right, that's, that's non-relativistic speeds. That's about a thousandth of the speed of light. So that, that won't really create any sort of relativity issues that we have to consider um, because right relativity only happens close to the speed of light. Um, and this is not, not very close. Okay. Well, de Broglie wavelength, um, I should actually probably show you where this is on your equation sheet. That'd be good. So we're, we're down in modern physics over here and here we go. This just tells you Lambda. It just gives you lambda. It doesn't say de Broglie wavelength. It just tells you wavelength. But this is the de Broglie wavelength. So we've got lambda is equal to h over p. So that's something that you have to know. You have to know that this lambda is the de Broglie lambda for lambda equals h over p. You just, you got to know it. Okay. So if we were to take a look at this, we get lambda, and this is the de Broglie wavelength is equal to h over p. Um, well, is our object massless? 
No, it's not. So it, it has mass, which means momentum is mv. Okay, then we can plug some stuff in, right? Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Um, but right, if we just remember what unit everything comes out with, we'll be fine. The mass of an electron. Okay, well, mass of an electron, where is there somewhere we're given that number? Yes, there is. Equation sheet. Let's pop over there. Mass of an electron. We look up at the top. We see mass of an electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. Okay, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. So that's what we can plug in times 10 to the minus 31. It's velocity while it's traveling at 5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. Okay, so if we plug this all in, I get 6.63 E minus 34 divided by 9.11 E minus 31 divided by 5 E 5. So for this, I get 1.46 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, or 1.46 nanometers. Oh, well, nanometers, that's something we can observe. That's bigger than an atom. So if we have a de Broglie wavelength of something that's bigger than an atom, oh, we can observe that. We can actually see what's going on. Okay, so our de Broglie wavelength for this electron is 1.46 nanometers. Okay, here's what's awesome. So the de Broglie wavelengths, and this is how we know for sure that this exists, that this is correct, uh, that de Broglie wasn't just a weird, crazy French physicist, that he actually was onto something. So we've got, uh, we've got an atom, right? We'll, I'll label that nucleus. Um, and this atom has energy levels. Um, actually, I'm going to see if I can see if I can't add circles. Ah, much better. If I had a circle here, and let's move this over. Perfect. Let's see if I can't add more circles. Ah, beautiful. You don't have to. You don't have to deal with me trying to draw circles and, and miserably failing. Let's, let's add one more. Okay, one more circle up here. So we've got our atom down here, right? And our atom has this nucleus. I'll color this in just so you know for sure that that's different than everything else. Okay, so we've got our nucleus of our atom. Oh, that is horrible to read. Nucleus of the atom. And let's say right up here that these are, let's say n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. These are just our energy levels for our electrons. Right, when an electron is over here, if we give it some extra energy, it can jump up. And then it can fall back down and lose some extra energy. Um, all, all that kind of good stuff. But that's what we know so far. What's different... And here's why we have energy levels. An electron here, right before de Broglie came up with this, we knew that electrons had energy levels, but we didn't know why. So here's why. If I were to take the de Broglie wavelength of one electron, de Broglie wavelength of one electron, for an electron here, this de Broglie wavelength would have the same wavelength as one circumference of n equals 1. So what this truly means is that n equals 1, the circumference, circumference equals 1 times the de Broglie wavelength of an electron. What happens from that if n equals 2? Then the circumference, circumference is equal to two de Broglie wavelengths. Right? So if 
if we keep going on this, then we, we can see that, all right, if n equals three, then there's three wavelengths that go on in here. Um, so this, I'll get a good color for this, hopefully. Um, let's do brown, why not? Essentially, all right, this will be below, my pen works, below, and then it crosses, and it's above, and then it comes back down, and there's the wavelength. And as this oscillates, then it goes above, crosses at the same point, and below, and then it comes back up, right? Just like if we had this wave, it's above, crosses, and below, equal. Or it's below, crosses, and then above, and equal. That's what this is. We've just now bent this shape in a circle. Okay, uh, I'll erase these just to get a little bit more vis visible room. Uh, if we were to have on n equals 2, this means that there's two wavelengths. Okay, so if we cut it in half, there's going to be the end of one wavelength, and then the other wavelength comes around. So it's above, crosses below. Above, crosses below, comes back. And then we get the alternate form of that, right? It waves oscillate. So if we go above and below, and then the other way would be then below, cross at that same node, and above. So we get below, cross above. Bel goes above, below, then cross it. Oh, my pen gave out on me. Below, give it out again. Below, above, below, above. And then it hits back at the same point. So these are actually its oscillations of a standing wave of an electron with the de Broglie wavelength is an integer number of the circumference, or an integer number of the de Broglie wavelength creates the circumference of wherever that energy level is. This is what we call quantum physics. This is what we call quantum physics. Quantum as a word. Quantum physics. What quantum means as a word is integers. That, that's it. Quantum means integers. So if we have quantum physics, all that really means is that we have physics that exists on discrete integer energy levels. So when someone says, ah, quantum physics, that's so scary, you can say, no, it's really not. Quantum physics just means that electrons exist on n equals 1 or n equals 2 or n equals 3, but they can't exist between because it has to be an integer number of the de Broglie wavelength. Right? So if we have n equals 3, n equals 3 over here, um, right? it's just an integer number of the de Broglie wavelength. So we need to cut it in thirds over here. So you get one wave below and above. Boom. And then below and above. Back to there, and then below and above, and back to there. Right? And then it oscillates the other way. Above, below. Above, below. Above, below. That's an atom. That's why we have energy levels the way that they are. And this is what's called quantum physics. So Louis de Broglie really figured this out. He was the only person to say, okay, maybe we have this wavelength for particles, right? If light, which is a wave, can behave like a particle, then a particle, like an electron, can behave like light. It can behave like a wave. So if waves behave like particles, then particles behave like waves. And de Broglie won his Nobel Prize for that. Um, and Actually, I'm not sure if he won a Nobel Prize. That sounds like something that would absolutely win a Nobel Prize, but I, I shouldn't make claims without knowing the research for sure. But there you go. There's this thing called de Broglie wavelengths. The next video, we'll look at more applications of this, but this is why de Broglie wavelengths are so important. If you come back over here, de Broglie wavelengths come from the fact that light has momentum. So why can't things that have mass have waves just like light? All right, I will leave you with that on this video. See you next time. Please let me know if you have any questions.